Justin Powers here. I'm with the USPA Polo Development LLC. I'm joined at New Haven Farm in Aiken, South Carolina by a Hall of Famer and former 10 goaler Adam Snow and Dr. Shelley Onderdonk, a veterinarian in the sport of polo. And uh, Adam and Shelley, you are just finished writing the Polo Life, Horses, Sport, Ten, and Zen. And uh, what, what was the inspiration of writing a book? Our inspiration to write the book was partly to answer the question that we get all the time. What does that mean to be a professional polo player? Um, and so part of the inspiration was just to answer that question. As we got into the process of writing the book, a lot of other issues came to the forefront. Um, and they would be different for the two of us, I would think. Primarily for me, it was to really uh, bring life to the way that the horses are used in the sport of polo. Um, a little bit for me is the idea that in order to really protect something, you have to know it well and you have to love it. And I want people to know and, and um, get to know and respect what a polo pony does. And through that, people will um, gain the ability to uh, take care of them a little bit better. And I think we're also motivated to um, give people a window into authentic polo. And by authentic, I mean our lives has, have been in, has been in the sport. Um, and when I was coming out of college and began playing polo professionally, what it was for me is traveling, playing, and writing. And now I turn around and I've had a 30 some odd year career in the sport. I'm traveling less, I'm playing a little bit less, but through my writing and our writing, I wanna talk about our lives in the sport and show beyond the polo circle, um, the public what, what this sport is. I think what Shelley was referring to about, you know, how do you play professionally? It's like we'll sit next to somebody in the airplane and they'll start asking us what we do and you're a veterinarian and a professional polo player and they're like, geez, I didn't even know you could play that professionally. How does it work? So I think that's one of the things we're, we're answering as well. So I understand there's a dream team chapter in the book. Can you tell us a little bit about that and, and what that team consists of? Well, the secret behind the dream team is it's actually a group of horses. Oh, see, I haven't read the book. Yeah. <laughs> so there is a chapter on, on, on teammates, which is, is different. But the dream team does uh, basically talk about eight horses that Adam played in 2000 and... That was, was that? 2006. Six. Yep. 2006. It was actually the horse list which we came across for one of my U.S. Open zone games that year, and I looked he at this. Because horse lists down on index cards to I, give to Bento and Betty. Before to liberate game. over it for several days before the match, and uh, we looked at it or and said, "Oh my God, that is an amazing group of horses," and I think it's. Let's write about it. Let's write about them. So, and there one of our editors at one point, actually, and this is where we had to do a lot of evolving as we worked through, she gave us the idea to actually expand it into an entire chapter because originally it was just much, much shorter. So I do discuss some great teammates, um, a mentor, um, other high goal American and Argentine teammates that, that um, I learned from and we had great partnerships together, but I think it's symbolic of the importance of the horse in the sport that our chapter entitled The Dream Team is about horses, not human teammates. So with that, and talking about the horses specifically, uh, what with the cover, tell me something about the, the horse that's used in the cover there. Well, it's Hale Bop, and I guess one of the most significant things is that she won this herself. So she won Best Playing Pony in the Silver Cup, and the Best Playing Pony prize was a drawing by Melinda Brewer um, of, of herself. And you can talk about why she's, she's so significant to us. just my all-time favorite. I don't know why. I, well, I do know why. She's like barely 15 hands and 
as wide as she is tall and her ears go in like this and she wins every ride off and she's always the first one to the ball and she just gave me her she had a huge heart and now she's about 300 yards from where we're sitting and giving this interview and she's been an amazing mother as well but um, you know I've played some amazing horses and I think she's my favorite of all of them um, and uh, we feel really lucky to have had her in our lives and to be her custodian to this day. And we do dedicate one chapter to her. <laughs> <laughs> so when I was younger, I remember watching uh, the PBS uh, documentary that you, you all had done. And you're, you, the two of you have, are known in the sport as being a very good team preparing and taking care of the horses. How did that uh, teamwork transition over into teaming up to write the book? Well, it was very cheap couples therapy. <laughs> <laughs> and I think at the core of our book and of our lives, our polo life, is uh, the partnership which we've worked on. It's not always easy and I think there's some tough times as well as good times that we discuss in the book. Yeah. But maybe when it comes to the documentary like they did on one of our horses, Rio, that Shelley was riding as a two-year-old and I was playing her first high goal season in Florida as a six-year-old with a helmet camera on my helmet, which I knocked off one time with a near side back shot. But, um, there's no better symbol of our partnership than the training and maintenance and playing and uh, best playing pony awards that a horse like Rio won. And so, that, so um, I think the horses are really, the horses and Shelley's and my partnership are really at the heart of our book. And the book is a little bit of a fractal of our life because I do a lot of behind the scenes work and he goes on the stage a lot. <laughs> Well, and it's, the book is nonfiction in its truest form, whereas I think some authors uh, can tend to put, put away something that they're writing and then come back to it. When you, when you all put away the book, you're coming out to the barn and, and living you know, the words that you're writing on the paper. So that's, that's got to be interesting to kind of be writing about something that is 24-7, 365. And we really tried to be honest about the tough times as well as the great times. And, you know, there were some years where Shelley had three kids and was, um, you know, at home managing the farm and I was traveling. And so there's each of our different takes on what being apart so much was like and um, absentee husband, absentee wife. And I think we, you know, give that its fair due too, so that it tries to be an honest portrayal of of this life that is um, always involved with horses and polo. Uh, polo and life do go uh, hand in hand. And, and uh, have you ever, through this process of writing the book, that it make you think more about what that journey was? And, and probably sometimes you're, you didn't know how exactly you got there, but you got there. It has made us think a lot about it. <laughs> and as one of our reviewers, um, mentioned the the polo life is is not a walk in the park there are a lot of challenges both um financially um emotionally as a couple um so yeah we we um like i said it was really good therapy it, it uh made us understand a lot more about why and how we've gotten to where we are and i think in some ways made us uh appreciate um, some of the of the tribulations a lot more yeah and it was it was a family sport for me growing up that my father played and come on kid get on a horse you can do it um, and played with my brothers and my cousin and um, so interestingly none of our three sons have taken it up um, but I think that that's fine too and I think that you know maybe in the future one of their kids might take it up or it's um, but the other thing I wanted to touch on with the polo life is that um, and it comes back to your first question motivation for writing the book I've always been a little bit troubled by the what I call the double-edged sword of polo being the 
a rich and aristocratic sport, which I understand I had plenty of privilege in my upbringing, otherwise I never would have been shown a horse to get on. However, I think there is a real great competitive sport that a lot of people don't know about, and so I... And a lot of people working in the sport who really deserve a lot of credit, which is another right. focus of our book. So I think Shelley's touching on, you know, it's not all that the Pretty Woman movie with the hats and champagne. I mean, that element does exist. Um, and it may bring some corporate sponsors that bring some money to the sport. However, the polo life that Shelley and I knew and are still living. often loved, but not always, um, was more in the barn with the grooms, with the horses, finding my next job if I could and how that works. Um, and um, so I guess that's why I used the word authentic earlier, but that this is really how it happens today. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, I've been really lucky that Shelley's joined it around the horses, I guess, is what we've kind of come together around. So in the title, in the subtitle, it says 10 and Zen. And obviously you've achieved 10, you achieved 10 goals in the sport, which is the pinnacle of the, of the sport of polo. Uh, why is that in there in, in, the, in the subtitle, the 10 and Zen, besides the fact that it rhymes? <laughs> so there's Zen on a, on a couple of levels. Um, one of the levels is Adam's journey in sports psychology, which um, taught him a lot about working with uh, mindfulness. Uh, the other part of it is for me um, the feeling that I have when I work with horses and feeling so much in the flow and loving um, being fully immersed in my work. Um, and, uh, and then a little bit too about our personal journey and we write a little bit about our yoga that we both practice and um, so those are sort of the three components of it. But. Well, I don't think you mentioned that you're a certified acupuncturist. So Shelley, working with the horses is often with chi points and needles and um, right. meridians. And so I think that relates to the Zen. And the um, sports psychologist that I worked with, even though she is Greek and wrote her um, PhD on competitiveness in the sport of, her dissertation on competitiveness in the sport of polo, her philosophy, or what I um, learned through her teachings, is sort of an Eastern approach. And, and I guess by that I mean that, you know, you don't combat your opponent, they're almost a partner, and I tried to be like, you know, going with the, the river, the water in the river is finding the easiest path through the resistance of the rocks in its bed. And um, so I think that there is a Zen connection to my mental approach to the game as well. Um, and it's not something that um, the sports psychologist went after as something that, that we found together through that work. Um, so the Zen applies on several different levels. Um, there's also yoga, which I found is a great off-horse way, particularly as I got older, of preventing injuries and um, staying supple uh, of mind and body. And um, so, so there's Zen on many different levels, but that's why we felt like it was we could use that word in our title. Subtitle. Subtitle, thank you. <laughs> Where, uh, in all the places that you have played, Adam, where was the, the spot that was kind of getting back to the zen, you know, the, the best balance, besides Aiken, obviously, being your home, the best balance for um, your all's relationship yeah. and your and your. So I've sport. played in many terrific venues with great fields, um, and, you know, there's different qualities about my favorite venues, which are tremendous. You know, the Florida, the fields and the organization and the most competitive teams of pro and polo anywhere in the world. And England, the villages and the food. It's odd that I say that, but we love the food in England at our favorite pubs. But putting it all together as far as the zen of our relationship and horses and everybody being comfortable and happy, it would have to be Santa Barbara, California. 
and um, we're actually getting to go out there this summer and I'm going to be playing in two tournaments and um, Shelly and the kids will be out but there's um, the ocean, the mountains, the horses, polo, yoga. There's been a lot of efforts the last few years to bring new people into the sport, both youth and adult players. And with that, we have uh, first time horse owners and new horsemen and horse women. So what are some uh, areas in the book that uh, people that are new to the sport can take away uh, from the book? Well, this isn't exactly polo manual but I would hope that there are a lot of takeaways for people. Um, and I think predominantly people are gonna understand that to play this sport at any level does require dedication and commitment. Um, and there is a commitment to um, preparing yourself as an athlete, which I think Adam talks a lot about in the book. And then there's also the, um, the commitment to taking care of the horses and, and what it takes to um, bring horses to the field. And so we certainly talk about our journey with that and um, what, what kind of care we take of our horses as an example. Yeah, um, I, I remember Mike Azaro one time asking me, you know, Adam, how did you make it to 10 goals? Like not talking about my ability, but talking about my path. And, you know, you were born in Japan and you went to college and you played hockey in college. and. Then even after Shelly and I got out of college, there was a year where I stopped playing um, and then I came back to it. So, um, you know, I understood his question, but through the course of writing this book, I kind of answered that question because I look back on it and I realized that I couldn't have done it any other way because the skills I learned in college um, helped me with my cognitive journey of getting to, you know, where I got. There's, there's a lot of support circles in my, um, in my polo career. One of the biggest ones is sitting beside me right now, but there's also a mental coach that helped me immensely. There's a group of horses that, you know, I look back on and I'm like, how in the world did we ever find this group of horses and compile them all at the same time? Um, but I also give my five tips for the aspiring polo player um, I don't want to divulge everything in the book right now. You'll have to buy the book for that one. So I think there are lessons um, in life and polo that can be gleaned from this book, for sure. So we talked about the inspiration of the book. What was the actual, give us a little bit of uh, the process to getting words on paper uh, in terms of working together as a team to uh, write the book. Well, we started out with a little bit of the idea that we would be writing chapters together and some of it revolved around the many stories that Adam had from his time in polo and also some of his journal entries um, that he had kept over the years he kept a journal and me giving some shape and some analysis and some bigger picture to what was going on with those and from there, it evolved into a couple of different things where we would give each other ideas of things to write about, and one of us would really write primarily, and the other one would certainly help and edit and be there to bounce ideas off of, but it was a little bit more of a, his chapter or a, her chapter. Um, so combination. And we used to set up... Um, times we had to often meet on a Monday morning and say okay when can we sit down because we we realized we were a lot more productive if we actually sat at the same table and we had a set of hour or ideally longer but often it was just an hour to to do some work and I think we both entered into it a little bit cautiously like mm -hmm. what was it going to be like to write a book with my wife my husband and um but we're very different um types of writers workers and i think we complemented each other nicely um i like to rewrite and rewrite and rewrite and shelly um would like to finish something or help me finish something and then move on to another subject um 
And I think our and Adam likes to tell stories, and I like to analyze. <laughs> right, right. So there's a lot of Shelley reflecting on my stories, and um, and then there's certain chapters that are my voice, certain chapters that are Shelley's voice. There's a little. Um, and we did have a an editor at one point that really helped us reshape the book about six months into the project, and. That person was crucial because they had to be very sensitive working with us as a couple. Because there were some really sensitive things that comes up, you know, you don't like something that somebody is doing, or, um, you know, a lot of our book is personal and about our marriage. And so um, we were very fortunate to have, as our editor at that point, somebody who really was able to um, be diplomatic. So Adam and Shelley, you're both uh, contributors to the Polo Skills Network and the Certified Polo Instructor Program, and we want to thank you for your contributions to the sport, as well as writing uh, a book that I know a lot of people are looking forward to reading. So again, I just want to thank you guys for your time and uh, look forward to reading it. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Justin.